Hey guys, James Four Wheel Drive here. So for today, we're going to be working on something interesting. Um, you can already tell by the title, possibly what kind of uh, vehicle this thing is. And uh, that's the engine block right there behind me. Um, I finally got all my parts. I got all my supplies. We're ready to go. The only issue is, is um, my shop is, it's a little messy. So uh, let's get that fixed. There we go, much better. So, uh, yeah, a little bit cleaner. I organized, put some things away. So, uh, today I wanna to talk about this engine right here. It come out of this vehicle. This is a mini truck. There's the transmission right there. All right, so that engine that come out of it is right here, okay? Uh, this is a, uh, they call it an F6A. You can see it right there on the block, F6A. Uh, it's a three cylinder. It was made for the Suzuki Carry. And uh, there's a Suzuki minivan as well. Um, these engines are quite rare. Uh, they're hard to find. They're hard to find parts for. Uh, these are the pistons that come out of it. As you can see, they are pretty well toast. Um, the valves, they look okay, but um, I'm going to show you the rebuild kit that I bought. Alright everyone, so this is the engine kit that I ordered off of eBay. You just type in F6A engine overhaul kit. And uh, they sell a kit that, that has a brand new crankshaft, cylinder liners, even though we're not using them. I won't be using the cylinder liners, I don't need them. Um, it comes with pistons wrist pins, piston ring set, all your gaskets, head gaskets, valve cover. Um, I don't know if this engine uses a pan gasket or if it's just sealant. New valve seals come in this. They didn't say whether or not it had this in there, but it does come with valve seals, um, your exhaust gaskets. It comes with new intake and exhaust valves, so we're going to be doing those. Um, I've got the lapping compound and everything to put those in. New connecting rods new main bearings, new thrust washers, and your new connecting, uh, connect, uh, wow, can't talk, connecting rod bearings. So, uh, I don't know what this crank is coated in, but, uh, it is extremely sticky. Um, it is probably going to have to be washed with gasoline, if I had to guess. I'm probably going to make a gasoline bath so that I can wash this and rinse all this film off of here. Um, I don't want to use brake clean if I don't have to because, you know, why use it when you can just use regular old gasoline? Um, here's the oil pan. It also is full of oil shavings or metal shavings. There's metal all in this thing. Uh, I am going to do my very best to get it as clean as possible. Uh, it's probably going to have to sit in gasoline as well. But, um... I guess the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to move all these clean parts out of the way. We got to get this block. We got to pull that uh, water pump off. We're going to pull this bracket off. I got to spray it down, um, get it all nice and clean. We're going to uh, wire brush it, tape it off, and then I'm going to paint it so that we can stop all this rust and corrosion. All right, guys. So here's the engine block. I've been cleaning a little bit. I got this side pretty clean. Uh, we're going to hit it with some... Um, degreaser and stuff make sure all the grease is off of it then we're going to paint it but before we do all of that i need to get these cylinders cleaned up um you can see they've got some just some like surface rust and stuff like that they just you know those are fingerprints from when i was picking it up but um they're a little rough so um and they're glazed so what i want to do is, is i just want to knock the glaze off of them I just want to give the rings a, uh, a fighting chance to uh, seal good. So the idea that I come up with, because I don't have a ball hone and I couldn't find one locally, is a green scuff pad and a drill. And the way this works, you stick it down in there and you spin it and you move it back up and down. I'm not doing it full speed right now because I need to put some lubricant on it. Uh, I'm probably gonna use some of this PV blaster just spray them down just something to where it's not dry It doesn't need to be um, 
anything significant. Um, but anyways, that's the idea, so let's get to it. pretty dang good we're gonna clean that up and uh, make sure that uh, looks good but you get the point well, I'm gonna do that same thing to all these cylinders here we go looks pretty good there's the first coat we're gonna do one more coat on this thing um, I haven't done the backside yet but we'll see you after it's done all right, so the uh, the block is drying still, so we're cleaning the crank. And like I said, it's got this yellow stuff on it. And uh, I've got this little bowl of gasoline. And it seems to be doing a pretty good job. So I've done this part. I haven't done this part, but we're just brush on there and cleaning her up. So we'll make sure this thing's all nice and clean. It has no residue, no yellow residue on it whatsoever. And then we can install it in the motor. All right. Crank's all nice and clean. We're gonna put in our thrust washer, which goes here and here on this side. And then we're gonna put in all our main bearings. Um, I don't think there's any difference in any of them. I think they're all pretty much the same. Um, you know, make sure the holes, the oiling holes line up, but we're going to drop those in. We'll put our engine assembly lube. Then we're going to put our crank in. Then we're going to put our bearings in our main caps, which are over here. And then they're numbered one, two, three, four. Uh, I'll have to look at my pictures, but. I believe four is the back, one is the front. Over the edge, feel like I'm floating through the air. The pain I felt is paid for, all is said and done. All right, so we got it installed. I don't have it torqued down yet, but turning nice and easy, which is good. Um, we're gonna put our oil pump on next and our rear cover. So let's do that.
All right, so now we're working on the oil pump. Um, the old pump and rotor look fairly good. The housing's on, damaged. This isn't damaged. Um, they look really good. Um, so we're just gonna Starts up. One any. Any dry spots whatsoever. These don't appear to have sealant or uh, thread locker on, so I am not going to put thread locker on. Feel like. You know, one of the main reasons why I'm making this video is because I got online to look at rebuild videos, and there's none out there. All right, guys, so you saw me assemble the pistons. Pretty simple stuff. Um, mainly with the rings, the top ring, I'm gonna put, I ain't even red, but this is the way I'm gonna do it. Top ring is uh, right there. The secondary ring is 180 degrees. Uh, the oil control rings aren't, it isn't super critical. You can kind of put them wherever you want, just as long as they're not lined up with each other or they're not lined up with the uh, the brake in the oil control ring so uh, we're gonna oil these up I gotta put the bearing on and we're gonna slide them through this way and then I'm gonna bolt them on on this side uh, there's real no good way to record this from both angles I only have one camera so uh, I'm just gonna put the camera up and what you see is what you get
All right, guys, so um, I did run into a tiny little snag. This is the oil pickup tube. My, uh, mine's nice and clean, um, but there's a little O-ring that goes in here, and then it seals against the block surface where the oil pump pickup is. Um, there's a little O-ring that's supposed to go here. Well, unfortunately, in my rebuild kit, it doesn't have one. Um, it actually has no O-rings in it, except for like one. So um, anyways, uh, luckily for me, I do have a full O-ring set. And the O-ring, I think I got this from Harbor Freight if I'm not mistaken, and I wound up using O-ring number 11. So, um, I don't know how much this O-ring kit is, but it saved me a bunch of times. This is a, buy it, you'll never, you know. May, every now and again, I'll run into a situation where I don't have the right O-ring. But anyways, uh, here is that number 11 O-ring. It, uh, let me see if it's gonna, it's just bevel just above where it's supposed to be. That's gonna bolt on there. And, uh, we can type that. All right, so on another note, um, I was editing last night and I realized that this video is gonna be very, 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 very long uh, at the rate that I'm going. So, um, that's gonna be it for the bottom end. I'm going to, um, upload what I have and then uh, I'm gonna let my GoPro charge and all this stuff get everything set up and then we're gonna work on the cylinder head putting the motor together and putting it in the vehicle so that's the end of part one uh, we'll have part two up here pretty soon thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one